Namaste and good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the virtual class of Great Ten English. Today, we are again in Unit 15, and but this time we have a grammar topic or grammar exercise. So, dear students, uh, today we'll talk about past tense. But uh, remember one thing: we have already done some past tense uh, structures or say uh, past tense um, lessons. Uh, in the previous classes, and but today, that's a little bit different, or we are going to do uh, past tense with uh, a little bit different structure. So, uh, without any more delay, let me begin uh, with one, um, with one or two pictures here. Let me show you on the screen. Few pictures. You can see it. This is the picture of uh, Kathmandu Valley, very old picture. Remember, this is a view from atop the Ashoka Stupa in Lagankhil. Especially, this picture was taken uh, okay, from Ashoka Stupa. And this is the picture of Lagankhil over, uh, say, near Patan, you know. Patan, and we can see uh, at the backdrop, you can see Sivapuri Hill. This is the picture taken uh, in the mid of uh, 1920s. Look at this, it's very old. You can see a pond there, or say, uh, a way, a road, and a few houses, see? And then have a look. There is another picture. This is also one of the old pictures of Kathmandu Valley, aerial picture. Few houses, right? And uh, you know, enough land for cultivation. Farming was done. And Kathmandu Valley, remember one thing, Kathmandu Valley used to be a very, you know, good for cultivation, good for farming. There used to be uh, fertile land. And only a few houses were there. Few roads, no motors, nothing. It's quite primitive type, right? And you can see another picture. This is um, the same picture, you know, of Lagan Kill, or this is near the Patan, okay, near Patan Darwai Square, and this is a modern picture. You can see this is uh, the picture of uh, night time. That's why the lights, uh, light, you know, you can see. But it's very modern. Look at the um, beautiful buildings there. Temples are old, no matter. But the, the crowded houses, you know, you can see there. And this is a very old picture of Swayambhu. You can imagine Swayambhu and then um, there, trees around the temple of Swayambhu, or around the stupa of Swayambhu, not exactly temple. And there are, I think, um, not so many houses there. It's quite like a very old village, right? No houses, no streets, nothing. And this is a very old picture taken around, uh, you know, in the 20th century, we can say, early, middle of 20th century. And this is also a very old picture of Kathmandu Valley. Now, this is very new one. The same Swayambhunath you can see there. Okay, here is Swayambhunath, right? Swayambhu. And trees are still there, but look at the houses there, you know, concrete buildings, modern concrete buildings. Crowded. It just looks like, you know, um, very, the jungle of concrete, right? Concrete jungle. So, this is what the changes are. Now, uh, why I, I showed these things here is because we have to compare these things. You can compare these two pictures. They used to be, you know, what? No houses? No, there used to be few houses, but here, uh, in the second picture, you can see uh, there are lots of houses, lots of concrete buildings, and there, you, uh, there used to be a narrower path, or at least not big roads or not um, black-topped roads. But here, in the second picture, you can see the roads are black-topped, and uh, there are vehicles running. So um, it, is, uh, it looks, you know, very modern, very advanced, but the first picture looks very primitive type, very old type, ancient type. 
and uh, these are the changes. You can see uh, lots of changes there. And in the second picture also, see, in the both picture you can see Swayambhunath. And here we have got Swayambhunath there. And these two pictures are different in the sense this is very old, this is very new. In the first picture, you know, you can see uh, there were what? There were a few houses and then it is black and white, that's why maybe the picture is not so clear, but you can clearly see uh, the, the picture, um, the place that time was not advanced, not modern, there were not big houses or there were not big streets or big roads, they were not black topped or many more. And uh, there were not big um, houses, not big shopping centers or complexes or not big hospitals. That is very old one. And in the second picture, the houses are, uh, so many houses are there, and then they are concrete buildings, right? And then maybe, we cannot see the roads here clearly, but you can see the buildings, tall buildings around the Kathmandu Valley. So uh, these are the changes. Now, in your textbook also, in the very beginning, uh, I think you cannot see, you know, it's on page number 168, you can see in uh, first question, there are two pictures in your textbook. Um, the pictures are very small, so you can have a look there. And in the first picture is given, you know, uh, the time, the village of uh, 30 years before. And in the second picture, it talks about the present time, present world. And in the first picture, you can see um, few, you know, um, thatched roofed, uh, roofed houses, means fewer houses, fewer people, and the people working in the field, you can see there. And in the second picture, many people, maybe, probably they are not working in the field, they are just going to the office or somewhere, and there are big concrete buildings also. The same thing has been shown as I showed you on the screen right um, before. Now, uh, talking about the pictures given in your book, let me put you, uh, let me show you here the sentences given in your textbook as well. Okay. The sentences are given here and this is what? This is the comparison of past and present. Can you see it? Okay. Now, uh, in this chart, uh, this is the chart of sentences here. Uh, this, in number two in your textbook on page number 168, you can say, Preeti noticed the difference between the two pictures, means the pictures given in your textbook, right? And showed them to her English teacher. So, how she explained or how she uh, felt, how she took about those pictures given in your textbook, this is what she, she wrote or she felt. Then and now. Then means the past one, now means present. We are comparing past and present here. How Pretty noticed it, how Pretty found it. Like the first sentence, there used to be trees in the village. Can you say used to be here? Used to. There used to be. Remember, used to plus infinitive form. Remember the structure. We are going to talk about the same here. There used to be trees in the village means there were trees, right? There used to be trees, means there were trees in the village. Now there is wide surfaced road. There is wide surfaced road, means bigger, wider roads. Second sentence, children used to play under the tree. Used to again, with subject. Children used to play under the tree. Balbali karu rukhmani khelne garthe. It means it is again past action, right? Children used to play under the tree. Means children played where? Children played under the tree. When we simply write children played, past form of the verb directly, this is a simple past tense. And this is also, you can say, simple past, but this is a different structure dealing with the past tense, especially when we compare the past action with the present. We compare past and present using used to. Used to is used to describe past action. So, what is the structure here? 
uh, which subject we use used to uh, plus infinitive we call verb one for infinitive this is what the structure is subject plus used to plus infinitive and if the sentence is negative remember used to should be written like this did not or didn't use only use to plus again infinitive you can feel it here negative structure is also given this is what the negative structure is they did not like this they did not use to when there is already did we simply write use only use use they did not use to go to school school this is the past action now what they do they study at school this is the comparison in present tense we write simply verb one or verb five this is simple present tense we call it present tense if the subject is plural use only infinitive form that is verb one and if the subject is singular use uh, singular verb that is verb five so they study at school they means here children and in the last sentence here people used to work in the field people used to work remember the structure one more time used to plus infinitive that is verb one people used to work in the field so this is past action is that um, in present time anymore no it's no longer there look at the change people go to the office in the past what what happened here in the past people used to work in the field and at present people go to the office this is the comparison of past and present or then and now when we compare the past and present to describe something especially to describe about to describe place or to describe your habits or to describe what happened in the past regularly and what's no longer there or what is no more there so while comparing the past and present we simply use this structure used to so i have written here subject plus used to and then infinity form very simple structure is there so this is or uh, this was the exercise from your textbook on page number 168 uh, in number two and now we have another one another exercise this is for you again we have to match it uh, i think you got the structure when we talk about past action we use we can use used to but for present time we use verb one or present tense present form and this is called comparing the past and present And here is another exercise. This is for you or for your practice given in your textbook uh, on page number 169. So here it says, in okay, match the adjective activities in column A to the activities in column B. This is uh, about uh, uh, again the same thing, past with the present. We have to make a comparison so compare the past with present i think it's not going to be difficult no uh, problem with the uh, structure all the structures to describe the past action here with used to given and for present tense with verb one or with present tense that's given now what we have to do is we have to compare when i was a small child these were the actions or activities when I was a small child. And these are the activities when I am in grade 10. I think you, dear students, you are in grade 10. So these sentences might be very much related to you all. So here, number A, when I was a small child, I used to play with a doll. Did you used to play with a doll? Yes, everybody does that. So number A, I used to play. Look at this structure. Used to plus play. Verb one. I used to play with a doll. Now, now what I do? We have to match it with sentence number A. With sentence uh, here matches with sentence A. We have to find out. Play. Find out the similar type of action. 
play, right? So this one matches with the first sentence, play. So this sentence should be written A. This is matching exercise. So I used to play with a doll. Now I play volleyball. Don't you think this is a change? Yes. Talking about change. We are talking about change here. In number B, I used to sing nursery rhymes. Used to sing. Is there any sentence with sing? Yes. Here we have got. Now I sing modern songs. In the past, when I was a child, I used to sing nursery rhymes. Means songs for children. Nursery rhymes means songs for children. And here, now, I sing modern songs. Means you are in grade 10 now, so what do you prefer to do? You prefer to sing modern songs. This sentence matches with the sentence number B here, so write B for this. I sing modern songs. Number C, I used to sleep with my mom. Yes, a child um, sleeps with mom, no wonder. I used to sleep with my mom. Now, what is the sentence with sleep all? Yes, here. Now I sleep alone. So this is sentence number C. This sentence matches with sentence number C. Uh, similarly, look at number D. I used to drink a lot of milk. Means when I was a small child, I used to drink a lot of milk. This number D here. So this is D. Uh, likewise, number E, I used to have food that my parents prepared. Means when I was a small child, who prepared for, uh, for food for me? My parents. So I used to have, means I used to eat food that my parents prepared, parents made. Now, this sentence matches with which one? Yes, the last one here on this side, side B. Now I prepare meals by myself. This is... Uh, number E. So, do you prepare meals yourself? Okay, you have to develop the habit of cooking. Now, number F. I used to listen to birds chirping, means birds singing, bird song. I used to listen to bird song, right? Now, I listen, what? Where is it? Yes, here it is. Now, I listen to music. Remember the structure. I used to listen, I listen. This is present, present action, present activity, and used to listen, this is past action, that is no more now at present, right? So used to listen, used to plus infinity form. Always remember the structure. Uh, talking about the past habit, past action. This is all, you know, habitual action of the past. For the present habit, we write present tense, simple present tense. Well, one or well, five with subject. For past habitual action, we use used to plus infinitive. The structure I just wrote here on the board. And uh, now number G. So did you write that? Number F for listen to music? Yes, this is number F. After F, number G. I didn't, I didn't use to wear school uniform. Remember this structure, negative. While making negative of used to, it just happens like this, did not plus verb one, two, used to, right? Did not used to. This is negative of used to. I didn't used to wear school uniform. School uniform, this is the past action, you know, past habit. I did not used to wear school uniform. So what is the matching sentence for this? For number G, uh, where is school uniform? Right, here. Now I put on school uniform. Put on means here wear. Only the words, the phrase is used here. Well, this is number G, matching sentence with number G. Now I put on school uniform. Now one 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 and only left here, number H is, I did not use to tell stories. Again, negative structure continues. I didn't use to tell stories. Here, one and only left. This is number yes. So what is the meaning here? Now I write stories myself. In the past, when I was a small child, I did not use to tell stories. Right? I did not use to tell stories means I didn't know stories. I didn't tell stories. Now what I do? Now I write stories myself. This is the change. 
We are just comparing the past with the present. The actions, the habits, which were already there in the past, but now they are no more. Or the habits, which were not in the past, now it has become a habit in the present, at present. So uh, what you have to do is, when you find contrast or differences between the past and present, that time we can use such structures like uh, to describe the past tense we use um, used to, and to describe present action or present habit, uh, habitual action or habits, then we describe, we use um, simply, simple present tense. It means we use about one or about five with the structure. So that was the exercise from your textbook on page number 169. Now, uh, I would like to continue here with another exercise. This is given in your textbook again. And, uh, okay, let me draw your attention to this one. Okay, in number two in your textbook, what it says, it says, imagine you have been to the nearest city after five years. Now write at least 10 changes you have noticed there. I've already told you, in this topic, in this particular grammar topic of past tense, we are simply comparing the past with the present. And this means what? This means we are dealing with the changes, or we are talking about the changes that have occurred in a place or in some place. So we are comparing, this means. Changes are there. When we notice change or changes, we use such structures like used to and present tense. So here, again, uh, look at the board or look at um, this uh, slide on your screen. In number two, it says, imagine you have been to the nearest city, means you have gone to the nearest city after five years. Now write at least 10 changes you have found, you have noticed there. Means, um, okay, here you can see, uh, in, the, in your textbook also, the starting, the beginning is already given, right? So follow that beginning or follow, uh, you, you can write your writing or you can prepare your writing just uh, by following the structure or by following the given uh, beginning that is given in your textbook. And here it is like that. While writing, don't forget to write such things. This is not given in the book. I just um, prepared it for you. Uh, what to write or what kind of changes you should focus on. Just these are the things. Uh, these, uh, there, there can be some other things also. These are only primary things. Just like concrete buildings have replaced the small houses with thatched roofs. Because this is the common change everywhere. Whether it is in Kathmandu or whether it is in Parbat district or in Baglung or in Kalikot or whatever, wherever. Um, the changes are there. This type of change is always there in every place. That's why this is a very common change. I think it will be suitable for the students of Parbat also, for the students of the Tarai also, for the, the uh, people of uh, mountainous regions also, right? So number eight, concrete buildings have replaced the small houses with thatched roofs. This is only change. This is not what we have to write. This is the change I'm talking about, right? Number B, the streets have been widened and blacktop. Don't you think in the cities after 10 years or after five years when you visit, what do you see? You see some changes like these things. Streets becoming wider and becoming blacktopped. Pitched, this is pitched road. This talks about pitched road. Blacktop means pitched, pitched road. Now, number C, next one. A large hospital has been set up means it has been established. Maybe in the past, there were uh, not big hospitals in any place, um, and but now there can be, there can be, because these are the changes. And then there can be some changes like education, change of education. People have become more educated than before. I think you realize this. Wherever you are, people are getting more educated. Yes, that's the change, common change. Uh, next one is supermarket shopping centers. It may not be necessarily there, be there in every place, right? Um, shopping centers, supermarkets, but this is also one of the changes, you know, uh, when uh, the, there is the process of urbanization or, you know, when the, uh, the villages are becoming um, or changing into uh, big supermarkets or big cities, then there can be such changes. 
like uh, there can be some various other changes you can talk about these are just the primary focus and how what um, the textbook talks about here or the textbook asks you is just begin your writing uh, talking about the that place where you've, you have visited after five years uh, what kind of changes 10 changes we have to focus you know 10 changes we have to write so begin your sentence like this in your textbook what is the beginning yes I live at uh, Sankapokhari in Parvat. This is the beginning. That's already given in your textbook. But all these things are not given. This is what we have to do. Or we have to write. We have to complete this writing. I live at Sankapokhari in Parvat. Last Saturday, I went to Kusma. I found lots of changes there. This is already in your textbook. There used to be small houses with thatched roofs. But now there are big concrete buildings. Up to this point, it's you know already there in your textbook. Now from here, this is what I have written here, and this is what you have to write. Or means you are expected to write this in your writing. Talk about more other changes. It's not that you know you have to you have to write only these sentences, exactly the same sentences. No, just you can write in any way you like. But don't forget to write about the past and present. Means changes. You have to focus on changes. There were few, very few houses, but now the city has become bigger. You can simply write there were a few houses. For this, you can use the used to structure here. There used to be very few houses, but now the city has become bigger. You can use used to here for were. Right? There were, there used to be. B war is changing to B in infinity form. So there used to be very few houses, but now the city has become bigger. Don't you think this is a change? Yes. And now, dear students, uh, look at other more changes here. There are many houses. This is the present time, present action, present activity. There used to be small streets. Now this time, used to is used. There used to be were and be. Remember, when we use used to, this word, were, changes into be. Used to be small streets around the small city, but now they are widened and black dot. See, next change. Only a few people used to go. Used to plus verb one. Right? There are, only a few people used to go to school, but now every child goes to school. Every child goes to school. This is present and used to go to school. This is past. There used to be only one school in the city. There used to be only one school in the city. But now there are many private and public schools around the city. Not only private uh, and public schools in number. Uh, those private schools or those public schools of present time, maybe they are well facilitated. Means there are many more facilities than before, right? So you can write about that. You can talk about facilities also. Present schools and past schools. The hospital used to be of poor facility. Look at the condition of the hospital. In the past, what was the hospital like? The hospital used to be of poor facility. Poor facility means no facilities at all or very few facilities were there but different different what different modern equipments have been added and people get advanced health services nowadays this is the change what are there in the hospital now there are modern equipments see there used to be fewer equipments in the past but now there are modern equipments there used to be small groceries in the past. Groceries means small shops were there in the city. And but now, big supermarkets and shopping centers have been opened. You can write some other changes also if you feel like writing. Next one is people had more leisure time. People had more leisure time means people used to have. If you use used to for this sentence, you can write, people used to have. Had is changed into have in infinity form. Remember this. 
people had more leisure time means people used to have more leisure time. So meaning is same after all. Means uh, why we are talking about used to today is because uh, used to is also similar to past and this is also past tense. Remember, this is like simple past tense. People had more leisure time, but now everyone seems to be busy. This is the change. People were free in the past, now people are busy. New plants have grown, making the city green. This is present, you know. Now pl uh, new plants uh, have grown, making the city green. People used to throw the garbage everywhere in the streets. People used to throw the garbage. Garbage means waste materials. Dirty things, right? Dirt, dirty things, waste materials. So people used to throw the garbage everywhere in the streets, but now the streets are clean. People used to be familiar with each other since the city was small, but they are uh, indifferent to each other now. Do you understand what it means? The last sentence, people used to be familiar means they used to know each other well. Why? Why? Because the place, the city was small. There were fewer houses, fewer people, right? And uh, it is very easy to, to get to know each other uh, if there are few no fewer number of people. But now the city has grown bigger. There are more people, a greater number of people, and they don't know each other. That's why they are indifferent to. Indifferent to means they don't know, it, uh, know each other or they are not careful about each other. So they are indifferent to each other now. This is the change. Uh, this is the change means uh, you, you can write this way and this is not the end. You can write some other things, some other changes if you find uh, like writing. There can be changes about um, education, there can be changes about um, health facilities or there can be changes about transportation, changes about um, electricity, changes about some other you know, uh, facilities like telecommunication or uh, maybe uh, there, there can be so many facilities um, in the city that you, ca you can find the changes. So here comes next one. In number three, I think you are getting um, what I mean. Now in number three, uh, you can read the question first here. It's in your book also, on page number 169 in your textbook. Number three says, Wang Dun has been working as an interpreter in a trekking company for five years. He prepares a report on how the company has undergone change over time. Complete the report. Do you understand what it, mean? it, it means? What is the job of Wang Dun? Wang Dun is the name of a person, remember, Wang Dun. Wang Dun has been working as an interpreter in a trekking company. Trekking company is the company which, trek, uh, which takes the tourists, the visitors to trekking, trekking to the mountains or trekking to the hills, like this. Trekking means going or walking on foot, that is trekking. So interpreter means the person, the job of this man is to interpret or, um, or like a translator, because foreigners don't understand our language and what do we need? They need an interpreter, uh, an interpreter and that's why that is a job of translator, interpreter in a trekking company. So he prepares a report on how the company has undergone change. This question is also about change, you know. You are Wang Den. Remember, imagine you are Wang Den. You are working in a, in, a, in a trucking company. And what you have to do is, you have found some changes over a time. Uh, so complete the report. The beginning is already given in your textbook. Like, when I joined the office, there used to be only 20 staff. Now there are... 50. So this is the beginning of your writing, of your report that's given in your textbook. Now all of the things is what we have written here. Means you have to do like this. What other changes can be there? Can you feel? You are one then, remember. So other changes might be like this. Right? The company used to have only one office here in Kathmandu, but there are 10 other branches in different districts now. Do you think this is a change? Branches, more branches open in more districts, other districts. This is the change, he feels. Nearly 2,000 tourists used to come to the company annually, but now the number has exceeded to 10,000 every year. 
It means in the past, in the past when Wang Lin first job this company, job this uh, uh, sorry, joined this office or had a job in this company first, what he felt? He he found that time only uh, 2,000 tourists came to the company, but now what is the change? The number of the tourists coming uh, to the company is more than 10,000. This as exceeded two means more than 10,000 every year. Some other changes like this. Please have a look. The company used to hire many employees on seasonal basis, but now most of the employees are made permanent. Means. In the past, people used to have job in this company. What type of job? Seasonal basis, you know, on seasonal basis. Working for only one season. But now, they are, are, they are permanent job holders. The company used to focus on business. Used to, remember this. The company used to focus on business only. Right? Used to focus. Used to plus work one. Focus on business only. Now, it has been involved in different social and altruistic activities to uplift common people's life standards. It means the company does not do business only. The company is doing some social works. The social altruistic means helping others free of cost. This is altruistic activities, you know. Paropakar in Nepali. Altruistic activities to uplift common people means to uplift means to bring change, positive change in uh, people's life standards. Now it has become one of the leading companies in the field of tracking service in Nepal. This is what Wang Din has found the change in the company over time. This is what you do like, uh, you know, you need to do like this. Uh, you, you can find, you can include some other changes also. It's not the uh, final answer. You can write it differently if you can, right? Now, uh, there is one follow-up activity in number three. Uh, we are almost at the end of this class. So here, in number C, follow-up activity. Walk in a group, ask your friends about their past habits, complete the table as in the example. Example is given in your textbook. The first one is given in your textbook, like this. Name of your friend, Alim Sah. Maybe some other friend's name you can write. The activities they used to do. Means, just ask your friends about past habits. Their past habits, like this. So what Alim Sah used to do? Alim Sah means he used to play the flute. It's musical instrument, flute, basuri. And second sentence, he used to walk in the field. Remember the structure and follow the same step. He used to walk in the field. Field my camera. So what you have to do is write past habits only, right? Past habits using used to plus infinitive. And like this, this is what uh, I did from my side. Number two, like I wrote Vishnu Sreshta. You can write your friend's name. It's not necessary to write Vishnu Sreshta. Uh, and you can write what your friends do or used to do. He used to eat a lot of sweets or maybe a lot of ice creams, many things, what, whatever uh, your friend used to do. Just write that and here another sentence, he, uh, he used to go swimming every Saturday, but now he doesn't. So like this, include some other friends' names, at least five or ten friends' names. Just ask them to, um, to tell you about their past habits and don't forget to use the structure of used to and write, um, write in your copy. And uh, this means after writing, what you have to do is you have to present it to the class or you have to exchange your copies or you, you can just um, get your copies checked by your English teacher uh, whether your sentences are correct in structure or not, right? Structure-wise, your sentences should be correct. So, lastly, Lastly, this question is from my side. This is not given in your textbook. This can be for your homework. Write an essay describing the changes that have taken place in your community in the last five years. This is for your homework. What do you have to write? Write an essay. Essay about what? Essay about the changes that have taken place in your community, in your village, or in your area in the last five years. In five years period, you know, different kind of changes might occur like uh, we have just uh, we just did in uh, the previous question so this is the end uh, dear students uh, today we talked about past tense especially being based on the structure of used to while talking about past and present or while comparing the past with the present we use this structure used to plus infinitive remember this 
practice uh, more and more or uh, write about your friends you know just um, before we talked about that and uh, like this you can do the exercises uh, I, I hope you enjoyed the class or you learned something from today's class uh, before leaving let me wish you a very wonderful day ahead uh, have a good day namaste